Hi, I'm Tracy DeVette from tracydevette.com and today in this video I'd like to talk about what a panic attack feels like and what the symptoms are. So a panic attack is actually just our natural fight or flight system that's being triggered. Uh, it normally gets triggered by fear. Now human beings have developed over quite a long time and just like other creatures that fight or flight response is there to keep us safe to get us out of danger, to get us to run away as quickly as possible, fight back if we need to, or even freeze, go and hide somewhere. And uh, this can sometimes feel like an out of body experience where what's happening to the body, you are, it's as if you're watching it, but you're not actually experiencing it at the time. And that's all well and good. It does keep you safe. It does keep you out of danger. And that's great. But what happens if it's triggered just by thoughts, thoughts of things that aren't really dangerous, such as, you know, get, um, the commute to work or what your boss is going to say if you're late or that deadline at work that you have to do or dealing with that colleague that you'd rather not or your uh, difficulties in your personal relationships because all of these things can trigger this panic attack and then, or anxiety attack as well. And what does it feel like? So normally it, it, the first one may just come out of the blue and it might feel like you are having a heart attack and the fear of, that that generates of you thinking you're having a heart attack makes the symptoms way worse. Now, what I would say is if this is the first time it's happened to you, it's probably a good idea to go and get checked out at the time, just in case it is, it is a, a real physical issue. Um, and then you'll have the peace of mind if you get a heart monitor and, and it's nothing to do with your heart, then you realize that it is a panic attack and it's not uh, anything detrimental to your health. You, so you'll feel your heart is beating, your breathing will become rapid and shallow as you try and get more oxygen into your body in a quicker way. This in turn changes the mixture in your bloodstream between oxygen and carbon dioxide and it might make you feel um, dizzy or trembly or that you are going to pass out. Um, that can happen because the, 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 the oxygen mixture in your brain, brain has changed. You may also be sweating, feel trembly, feel scared, feel like something absolutely terrible is about to happen, so catastrophic thoughts. You also might just have a blind um, thought that you just wanna get right out of the situation. You, you just wanna run away or you want to um, fight with the situation physically, or you just wanna curl up into a ball and pretend that it's gonna blow over and it, it's, it's not affecting you. So those are psychological thoughts that you have, and they can be quite ho horrendous, quite horrifying. Um, you'll think of all sorts of, the, the worst things that can happen normally go through your mind. And that really is just your, your system telling you this could be really serious. It could be a life and death situation. So you need to take it seriously and you need to get yourself out of danger. And of course with modern life, most of the times we have a panic attack, it's nothing to do with anything physical. It's nothing to do with anything really physically dangerous to us. It's not gonna kill us in the short term. It's not gonna hurt us physically, but that's how we feel because that's our response to physical uh, pain hurt and reaction. Unfortunately, over time, these kind of reactions can use up our natural resources in our body. They're altering the way our systems work and they can have a detrimental effect on our hormone system, which are all our glands that keep our hormones in check. They produce our hormones, they regulate our hormones and they reduce them if necessary. And so all of these panic attacks are, could actually burn out certain parts of your body that keep those chemicals regulated. 
So it's a very good idea to go and seek some help. Now, if you've been to the doctor and you found out that it's not a physical thing, you're not actually having a heart attack, it's purely um, a physical response to a psychological stressor, um, there are a couple of things that, that you can do. One thing during the panic attack, you can actually breathe it down. So you can take control of your breathing. That's one thing that you can do. And as you slow the breathing down, you'll slow your heart rate down and you'll slow down that physiological response. You can also practice mindfulness. So you start with mindfulness, you wanna be aware of what triggers it. And if you find yourself being triggered, you can, um, try and think of a different thought that cuts off that very stressful thinking and tips it over into something positive as well. And it's normally something that you have to practice because the brain tends to think of a worst case scenario before it thinks of something more positive. So it's something that you can practice over time. If you go and see a doctor about it or a psychiatrist, they may give you medication. Um, it, which may or may not work. Um, and you may also be sent for counselling or advised to go for counselling. Um, unfortunately, counselling and medication don't actually solve your problem because they're not solving the underlying reason why this is happening. And the reason why your fight or flight response is being triggered by mere thoughts, it's because your subconscious mind is getting the wrong message that this is what it needs to do to keep you safe. So talking about it is just conscious. You know already uh, what, you tend to know already what stresses you. You tend to know that you're stressed, that you're under pressure. Um, so just consciously thinking about it doesn't normally make this go away. It's normally set up by a sub-program in your subconscious that it's learned long ago when you were growing up that this is the way it needs to respond in order to keep you safe. And one of the best ways to do this is to work with the subconscious mind to break that link, to break that chain and that vicious circle and, and uh, reduce the response to those mental stresses so that you don't have such a strong phys physiological response. And this is what I do. I work with your subconscious mind to change those underlying sub program. It's like a computer sub program that are playing in the background all the time. So if you'd like to uh, know more about this, please feel free to book a call with me. The Calendly link is below. Just click on that. Uh, answer the questions and book your call with me. I give you 45 minutes of my time completely free where we take a dive into the problem, see where and how I can help you. And it's always great to speak to you. So please do book a call with me. It doesn't cost you anything and it can only make you feel better, not worse. It's been Tracy DeVette from tracydevette.com and thanks very much for watching. And please check out my other videos if anxiety, panic or stress is something that you'd like to know more about.